Today we're looking at theme two, rights and responsibilities of the AQA GCSE citizenship course. We're looking at rights and responsibilities within the legal system, particularly what is the difference between civil and criminal law. Welcome to session four. Today you'll be looking at the difference between civil and criminal law. You'll then be moving on to do an activity which will demonstrate examples of civil disputes and criminal acts. What is civil law? Civil law is the system of law concerned with settling disputes between individuals or groups of people, e.g. divorce, breach of contract, prosecution for not paying a debt, wills and inheritances disputes, etc. These disagreements are called civil disputes and they're usually remedied, as in resolved, using fines. Here's some examples of civil disputes. Anything involving family is a civil dispute. So this could be involvement of adoption services, divorce, inheritance, wills, etc. Property law. So this surrounds all sorts of things regarding buying properties, during a divorce, settlements over the matrimonial home, i.e. the home that a couple may have bought after marriage. Contract law is a type of civil law, contract in employment or a contract you may have with someone doing work in your home like a decorator. And finally, tort law, which is all to do with negligence. So falling over in a supermarket and being able to claim compensation. This links into session one because usually when we talk about laws, people immediately think of criminal law and therefore criminal acts. But laws also regulate so many other parts of our lives. And this is where civil law comes in. What is criminal law? Criminal law involves acts committed against the state. What this means is behaviour that the state has decided must be discouraged or prevented, such as assault, murder or theft. These actions are called crimes. They are also usually dealt with by the police or some other authority and not by the individuals involved. Punishments include a custodial sentence, which means a punishment where your freedoms and your liberties are taken away from you, such as prison, or a non-custodial sentence, which cover sentences that do not take away your freedoms or your liberties, such as community service. This is a table that shows the main differences between criminal and civil law. When it comes to criminal law, the interactions are between the state and its citizens. What we mean by the state is the UK, the country itself that you're from. Whereas in civil law, the interactions are between two or more individuals. In criminal law, the purpose is to punish offenders who have done wrong. However, in civil law, the purpose is to put right wrongs against individuals. So to repair any wrongs that exist between individuals. The name of the court case in a criminal case is RV, the defendant's surname. So if the defendant's surname is Smith, it would be RV Smith. Or if the defendant's surname is Taylor, it would be RV Taylor. The R stands for Regina. Regina is the Latin word for queen. It refers to the reigning monarch. This directly reflects the fact that a criminal act is an interaction between the state represented by the Queen and the citizens who is represented by the defendant here. The defendant is the person who is suspected of the crime and will be defended in court by defence lawyers. In a civil case it's different. It's the claimant's name versus the defendant's name. Equally the defendant is suspected of doing a wrong and is being defended by lawyers. The claimant is the person who's bringing the case to court against the defendant. So the case may look like Smith versus Taylor if Smith was the claimant and Taylor was the defendant. The process between civil and criminal law. As mentioned earlier, in criminal law, it's the state that prosecutes, whereas in civil law, it's the claimant, the person bringing the case, who's suing or attempting to sue the defendant. In criminal law, cases are either heard in the magistrate's court or the Crown Court. The magistrate's court are for lesser crimes. The Crown Court is for more serious crimes. In civil law cases, the cases are either heard in a county court or a high court. They can also be heard in family courts if it's family related. The verdict in a trial when involving a criminal case is when a person is found guilty 
or not guilty. In a Crown Court, you have a jury who will make this decision and will make the verdict. However, in a civil case, the defendant is either liable or not liable. Notice the difference between language, guilty versus liable. Liable means if someone is to blame. In terms of burden of proof, in a criminal case, the jury needs to believe beyond reasonable doubt that the defendant is guilty. So they have to be quite certain that the defendant has committed the crime based on evidence. Beyond reasonable doubt. So not just some doubt, but beyond reasonable doubt. However, in civil cases, it's down to a balance of probability. So believing that it's probable, it's likely that the defendant was in the wrong. The outcomes in a criminal case is a punishment if guilty. The outcome in a civil case is a remedy for the claimant. That means a way of putting right the wrongs that exist, usually through some form of compensation. Examples of criminal offences are murder and theft, and examples of civil disputes are tort and family law. Now, it's not vital for you to know all the differences between criminal and civil law. What is required is that you know the definitions of both, you know how they're both different, you also know what sort of cases will go to which sort of courts, and be able to give different examples of criminal acts and civil disputes. This table gives you a general understanding of the differences between the two. In this session, we have covered the difference between civil and criminal law. We'll now move on to an activity giving you examples of civil disputes and criminal acts. Look at this table and decide which of these statements are civil disputes and which of them are criminal acts. Number one, an employer sacks a member of staff for refusing to remove a religious piece of clothing. Number two, a man murders his wife during an argument over an alleged affair. Number three, a couple have paid a surrogate mother for a baby. The surrogate mother has given birth but now refuses to give up her baby. Number four, a woman is caught dealing drugs to school children. Number five, a man is arrested for downloading inappropriate images of children on the internet. Number six, a woman feels she is being sexually discriminated against at work. Number seven, a drunk driver kills someone. Number eight, a woman finds a fingernail in a chocolate bar and decides to sue the company. Number nine, making a racist comment to someone. Try doing this activity yourself before we go through the answers. Number one is a civil dispute. This is often the type of case that would end up at an employment tribunal. Number two is a criminal act. Murder constitutes a crime. Number three is a civil dispute. An issue like this may be resolved in a family court. Number four is a criminal offence. Possession or supply of drugs is a criminal offence. Number five is a criminal offence. Downloading inappropriate images of children is a crime. Scenario number six, where a woman feels she has been sexually discriminated at work. It's a bit more complicated, so I've put the tick in the middle. And the reason why is because sexual harassment is not actually a criminal offence in its own right. Under the Equality Act, it covers sexual harassment in the workplace, but as a civil dispute. Lawyers must look to other pieces of legislation, not the Equality Act, to fight a criminal case when it comes to sexual harassment or discrimination. So, for example, if a female feels that she's being treated differently because she is a woman, for example, she hasn't been employed because she is pregnant, that would be a civil dispute. But it does depend on the nature of the sexual discrimination. Once it becomes sexual assault or physical assault of a sexual nature, then it is a criminal offence. So it actually depends on the scenario itself. A lot of people are calling for sexual harassment to be classified as a crime, as opposed to some actions of sexual harassment being a crime and others not. And this scenario here isn't just referring to sexual harassment, it's referring to any form of sexist discrimination, which could include not being employed because you're a female, but could also include sexual harassment. Scenario number seven is a criminal offence. Even if the driver was not drunk and had accidentally killed someone and therefore got a manslaughter charge, it would still be trialled in a criminal court. Number eight is a civil dispute. This woman can sue the company for the fingernail she has found in her chocolate. Finally, making a racist comment to someone. 
is a criminal offence and constitutes hate crime. Similarly, saying a homophobic or sexist comment to someone is also a hate crime. It is also a hate crime to say hateful things about someone's religion and disabilities. And like always, if you have any questions or want to know more, contact me, leave comments in the comment box and make sure you like my videos and feel free to subscribe.